This is Ben from Goat Whore. This is Brittany Slays from Unleash the Archers. This is Taylor Washington from Paladin. This is Nora from Battle Beast. This is Eric A.K. from Flotsam and Jetsam. You are listening to the Great Metal Debate Podcast. Metalheads to the Great Metal Debate Podcast. I'm Xander, and this is episode two of Drunk Metal Interviews. I am right here with... Frederick Sadovay. From the Swedish technical death metal band known as Surreption, and he is the vocalist, correct? Yeah, correct. All right. Uh, how are things doing, and um, what's it like touring in the United States? Uh, it's been good and really, really hot. For the most part, I've been sweating my balls off for a few weeks now, but today it's really, it's really nice. Uh, I mean, uh, touring-wise, it's been really a really good one for us. I think uh, it's been a, it's been a void because we have been away for so long. Uh, I think it was some 2015 we did some really real touring here, and then a short like uh, summer slaughter within 2018 that we had to cut cut short mainly because of these issues. So it's been good. People have been waiting for us. Yeah, uh, we've been having a heat advisory here in the uh, middle section of the United States for the past week or so, and it's hotter than two rats banging in the wool sock out here. So, yeah. Um, and, and by the way, the, the touring that you said, uh, um, I'm, I'm actually seeing you guys for the very first time tonight, and uh-huh. I'm really excited about it. I've been wanting to see you guys for a long time. And um, I got first heard of you guys back in 2016. Like one of my friends introduced me to the uh, Deterioration of Minds album, oh, yeah. which is fantastic. Mm-hmm. Everything you guys have ever d- done has just been golden. Mm-hmm. It's a little bit early in the day. There's a phrase here in the United States. We say it's five o'clock somewhere. Yeah. I know that most people like to wait until early later on to um, start drinking. But have you had anything to drink today? No, no, I never have. I don't even have a beer before I go up on stage. Okay. Yeah. Uh, do you guys consider yourself mostly straight edge? No, I, I wouldn't say that. But we we take we take it very seriously. Okay. Uh, the craft that we do. So it's uh, for me and for everyone else's reputation. It's a lot most important that we can we can do what we do good on stage. Then if you want to have a beer afterwards or such, that that is fine, you know. But kind of reward yourself a little bit. Yeah. Hey, but but uh, I would say there are other people in the band who would who would be able to take a beer before. And mainly for me is that if I have a beer before set, my throat dries up and it's just yeah, it's not enjoyable. Right, uh, and uh, you and I are both vocalists, and uh, for me, it's a matter of just kind of warming up. Uh, and obviously, I can't get to smash drunk before I start doing vocals. Mm-hmm. So I'm kind of in the same boat as you. And I'll, yeah. So, uh, personally, I've been a fan of your music for six years now, and as I said before, it's nice going to be my first time seeing you guys live. One thing I've always wondered, and I can't find a clear definition for, but what is the meaning of the word surreption? Oh, uh, to be fair, it's nothing. <laughs> it's nothing? No, that's actually the, the truth of it. Uh, it's, uh, uh, I think it was Tony, when he, when he came up with the name, he wanted something that didn't mean anything, uh, just to have a neutral word. But of course, there is a. I think the the, the main thing was a word play with the eruption of source, you know, something like that. But the word eruption doesn't mean doesn't mean anything. Okay, so it's a completely made up word then. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, That's awesome. Why I don't find anything. Okay, cool, cool. Let's talk about the outstanding new album, Jord. Am I pronouncing that correctly, or is it with like a Y? Is it more like Jord? Uh, well, I can I can pronounce it in Swedish. It would be Jord. You would. You would. You know, you would. Yeah. You uh, would. Uh, so that that in, in English writing that'd be like Y O O U D. I have no idea, but you know, it's it's fine if people say Jord as well. You know, it's uh, like I've been pronouncing it as Jord because I know that. Um, a lot of Swedish uh, names, like uh, Johansson, for example, spelled yeah. with a J, but it's pronounced like a Y, though. Yeah. Uh, and um, so, what, what's the meaning be- behind um, however you said that? You would. You, you would? Yeah. Uh, how, how do you, uh, like, what's the meaning behind that? Uh, well, you would in Swedish is like earth or soil. Uh, and 
it mainly encapsulates what I'm like the the theme of the album, which is a post-apocalyptic theme of the whole album. So I'm talking about what's after, like the apocalypse. So uh, a lot of like the a lot of like the themes on the records are about places or happenings in in this uh, like distant future where where the the earth is nearly inha- inhabitable and stuff. There was a TV show that I used to watch like ten years ago on the Discovery Channel called Life After People. Yeah, and uh, I remember that it used to show what the cities would look like if it started having vegetation growing around yeah. uh, what people had built before they were, they were went extinct, you know? Yeah. Is that kind of what's going on in this album? Every song is, is, is a different story, I would say, okay. in this setting. Uh, so it isn't it isn't fully stringent with every song. It's, it's not like a story from song one to song song eight. Every Every song is a different... It's a different theme within the post-apocalyptic theme. Uh, so just the album name Jord is is mainly made for to encapsulate the, the whole of it. Okay. Yeah. That, that, that's very interesting. Uh, so um, uh, almost like it, this album takes place right directly after the previous album, Monument of the End. K- kind of, yeah. It's all, all the album... Two Monument of the End and even Monument of the End for like some aspects I would say uh, are a bit um, grounded in the world we live in. Uh, for this album, I I went completely fictional on the, like the the top layer of the song, and then if you if you go when when you read the song and listen to the song, I still want people to be able to uh, make it their own. I, I don't want people to. To like, I, I'm not going to tell you what the song is about. I want you to read it. I want you to listen to it and make it your own. Um, you want people to interpret the lyrics from yeah, themselves. Because I'm not going to say that your interpretation is wrong if you feel one way when you read it. Read it. Right. Okay. So um, uh, one, one thing I need to know about the European language is that the, the word um, "yord." So there was also an album by the symphonic metal band known as Leaves Eyes, mm-hmm. and they put out an album called Jord also. Oh, yeah? However, they put what appeared to be a silent N before Jord or Jord. Is there a difference between the words? I have no idea. I mean, if you uh, if you go by the languages like in the Scandinavian languages, uh, there are differences, but I mean, I don't know about any silent Ns. Okay, that was kind of an irrelevant question, but I felt the need to ask yeah, it. Okay. What can you tell us about the recording process of the newest album? Well, it was uh, it was one of the harder recording processes we've done because we had a mem- like a member change uh, precisely in the beginning of the recording. Um, so we we started to record the drums and all that, and when it got to the guitars, we we hired Ian Way, who is actually with us on tour right now, playing guitar. Uh, to do the guitar parts and uh, I mean other than that it was basically like an ordinary record the biggest change except that Ian was playing the guitar is that we have eight uh, different solo guitarists on the album as well uh, one for every song who is like either a close friend of us or from a from another band we know or something like that uh, and we did this thing just because we had an opportunity to do it and thought it would be fun in the grand scheme of things, so it was a it was a bit of a longer process than than usually, um, but we were very happy with the, the result. Awesome, awesome. Oh, okay, so uh, so you're, uh, a few days ago, I actually ordered uh, some merchandise from you guys from the indie merch store. Yeah, and uh, of course, the first album I ever got into uh, from you guys was the Deterioration of Mine. So yeah. I saw that on the indie merch store, they had a hoodie yeah. for that album. I was like, okay, that's mine. I have yeah. to have it. Yeah, yeah. And, and so I ordered it. I haven't received it in the mail yet, but I will here in the next couple of days. Yeah. And uh, another thing that I had ordered was uh, a monument of the end, a wall flag. I, I collect these wall flags. I have yeah. so many of these things. And um, let's see here. What, what else did I order? Uh, oh, yeah, I ordered the beanie, too, yeah. with, the, with the logo on it. And I can't remember what else I ordered. However, I will say that a drumstick uh, is calling my name. I know that you guys are selling those at your merch stand right now based on the picture I saw. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Uh, are those um, signed, by the way, autographed? Uh, the drumsticks that we sell are usually things that have, like, broken from Tony, if, if it's a broken drumstick. Oh, okay. So we will only sell it if, if something is broken. So if you're lucky and Tony, like, 
fucks up a drumstick tonight, you may, might be able to buy it. Awesome, awesome. Uh, let's see here. Um, yeah, so I have no physical copies of Surruption. I've only uh, purchased from Bandcamp uh, the digital albums. But uh, if I do see any of them, uh, or do you have all four of the CDs available at the merch stand, or is it just the last two? Uh, it's, the la- it's the last two we have right now. Okay. Uh, well, uh, while I'm seeing you guys for the first time, I definitely want to uh, buy those and then get those the booklets autographed, oh, yeah. uh, if possible. That's good. Uh, let's see here. Oh, nice. So you guys have a very fast-paced yet groovy musical style. Uh, who are you guys' biggest influences? Oh, I don't know. Uh, it depends on who you ask. I mean, when, when we started, I know that uh, like Tony and Anton were big into the like decapitated, spun up possession, cannibal corpse, and those kind of bands. Oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> uh, so, so that's where they started. Uh, if you ask me, I, I went into this kind of blindly and just tried to do my thing at that point in the beginning. So I think we all come from different places. I will say though that there is no at no point in time we have like said like oh we need to write a decapitated riff or we need to write a riff that sounds a bit like this. We have just written music that we think, think sounds good and uh, and released it. I mean uh, if you listen to it you you will obviously hear like these decapitated vibes and that kind of stuff. Especially in the drum work, I yeah. noticed. Yeah. Uh, like, uh, I could definitely tell that he's uh, influenced by VTech, yeah. which, uh, rest in peace, by the way. Yeah. And, um, let's see here. Um, how long have you been doing vocals? I don't know anymore. Um, since I was 16. What What year would that have been? Well, I don't know. I'm 38 now. I need yeah. to do math. Should have been around... Should have been around 2000 somewhere then, I think. Okay, yeah, see, I'm currently 30 years old, and I've been doing uh, vocals since 2006. Yeah. So, uh, I think I was like 14 when I first started, but yeah. it, anyway. Yeah. Um, see, I'm not going to try to make this all about me, this is about you. <laughs> so, um, have, do you play any other instruments um, like besides just doing vocals? or? Yeah, but I, would, I wouldn't say I, it's, I dabble, you know. Okay. I, 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 can, I can handle a a bass guitar, I can handle a guitar and a keyboard, but I don't play them. I, I wouldn't say, like, in, in any way that would be sufficient in in, uh, in metal, at least. I think that you and I are kind of in the same boat. Uh, I could play bass, but I haven't played bass in several years. Yeah. Unfortunately, I had to sell that because I was running low on income at the time. But, uh, uh, you know, eventually I will uh, pick up a bass guitar again. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, anyway, so, um, what what... Uh, brand of microphone and uh, speakers do you use? Uh, I use a Shure SM55 with a beta capsule. Um, that's about it. I mean, I started using that because I didn't want to cup the mic. Okay. Uh, uh, I don't like. The, yeah. I'm not a fan of cupping the mic either. I mean, it's uh, it's it's mostly because I, want, I wanted the full vocal range in the microphone. Right. Uh, so I started using that, and then it just became a, a thing that I liked because it's a bit heavier than an ordinary microphone and. Uh, yeah, so that's about it. Um, yeah. Okay, so going back to the album itself, it, it, or actually, let's talk about all the albums in general. Yeah. Uh, your song titles are very unique, uh, just like the music itself. Mm-hmm. Um, how do you come up with the song titles and the lyrics? Um, I usually, when we write, I usually get uh, a nearly finished song. Uh, like, let's say that the song is about usually about 80% done when I get them and I write the vocal and the lyrics and I always write the lyrics to the patterns that I hear when I'm listening to the song so what I basically do is that when I start to listen to the song and I get some ideas of what I'm going to write I I build a theme around it and I continue from that so I don't know why it's unique or not Um, I just write what I think feels good to the song I'm listening to it makes sure it has a good flow. Yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, yeah. I just wanted to to have both the the theme and the vocals fit to what I'm hearing. Personally, I, I do it in the, in the most back words way possible. Yeah. I'm someone who writes the lyrics first and lets the band come up with the music. Yeah. Uh, you know, obviously, whenever you, you do that, you got to tweak the lyrics to make it fit the music that they wrote afterwards, though. So it, it becomes a little more complicated. Uh, so, um, uh, do you enjoy any other genres of music aside from metal? Yeah, I mean a lot. I I would say that 
Mm -hmm. <laughs> I would say that I don't listen to a lot of metal at all. Um, really? I mean, of course, I, I, if there's a good... I mean, the, I listen to a lot of Anal Nathrak and uh, Cattle Decapitation and stuff. But, I mean, that's just when I feel like it. I mean, it, if, you, if you would just hear what we listen to on this tour when we're not on stage, it's basically everything else. Because that's how it is. I mean, if you, if you, if you play death metal every day, and especially like around a time when you're recording an album and stuff, when you, when you get home, you don't want to hear more blast beats. You, you want to hear something mellow. I mean, I listen to a, a lot of Tom Waits and stuff, and I also come from, a, from an era where I grew up with the more new metal kind of stuff. So that's also what I like in in, in, in the metal kind of way. So I, I listen to comfort music a lot of a lot of time. Um, so I, I'm not I'm not gonna sit there and name drop cool metal bands because I probably don't listen to them that much, you know. Okay, uh, I that, I respect that completely yeah. because um, you know I had to drive for almost three hours to get here today. Yeah. I live in Clarksville, Tennessee, and yeah. I drive all the way up here. Yeah. And um, so along the way, I was actually listening to a country music station yeah. and. Because the radio signals go in and out whenever you're driving, yeah. I end up switching it to an oldie station. Yeah, and I, heard, see, yeah. and I end up hearing like um, White Snake. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, okay, I can get behind this, even though this was popular when I was born, you know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> that, that, that's what it's about. I mean, music is music. Yeah. You, music is a universal language, you know? Yeah, but, but of course, I, I, I've, I've listened to a lot of like. I would say, if, if I would. Personal influences, I, I love Opeth, I love. Uh, spawn of possession uh, yes. <laughs> and that kind of stuff. So, uh, and Cryptopsy, of course, was also one of the early ones in Origin. Uh, so I have those, but I have like, a non so vile shirt. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But from from a from a day to day basis, I probably listen more to like if if I'm I'm just turning on some music on the phone, it's probably going to be Tom Waits. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so um, let's see here. What's the next question I have in here? I, I, I kind of didn't space these apart, so I'm trying to find where yeah. it's here. Um, did you have any previous bands before Surruption? Yeah, I had, uh, like, uh, back in the day, we called, we called ourselves Metalcore, but it was probably more new metal. Okay. Uh, it's a band called Disdain. I mean, we weren't big. We were just a local band. So you will probably never hear it, but it, that's what it was. Um, Personally, I like the obscure kind of stuff, so I actually will buy it. check it <laughs> out right. if I can find it. Yeah, you do it. Do that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Um, do you do you have any current side projects, or is there any plans for the future of Surruption? Uh, of course, you have side projects here and there, but nothing like nothing uh, serious, I would say. Uh, not at this time, at least. Um, and future for Surruption, well, we've just released this album, so we're going to do what we can with it, and uh, then we'll see. Um, we don't, I don't have any, like, built-up plans where we're going to say, oh, this is what we're going to do next. We just, now we're on tour, and uh, when we finish this up, we're going to evaluate our situation and figure out some our next step. You know. Okay, so it's a little bit early to ask that question yeah. then. Okay, um, in all of your years of touring, uh, what is the craziest thing you've witnessed at a show? It was probably this tour when people started to do, instead of moshing, they were doing sit-ups and push-ups in the pit. <laughs> what the hell? Yes yesterday they crawled around on all fours in a ring in the in the mosh pit. So, yeah, this tour, is, I mean, uh, I've never witnessed anything like it, and it was it was fun and fucking weird. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so th this might be a new thing then uh, for your band in particular, because... Um... Apparently, yeah. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, you know, uh, I will say it is very good workout music. Like back when I used to work out, I need to yeah. get back in the gym. But uh, yeah. you know, I know that um, uh, Amon Amarth has their the row pits. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we apparently have push-up pits. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you know what? I'll get down and do as many pushes as I can. How about that? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Do twenty. Uh, yeah. I mean, if everybody else is around me, I'm not going to start. I'm not going to start it. Yeah. <laughs> um, anyway, so. Um, uh, I guess we're at the last question here. Yeah. Uh, where can fans of your music purchase your merchandise and your music? Well, they they can buy it from uh, both Unique Leader. You have some of the records, and you also have Sumerian. You have the like um, the Monument of the End. But we also sell the most of our merch from um, Indie Merch in the States and Impericon in the EU. Okay. Well, it was very nice uh, interviewing you, uh, Frederick. 
Uh, it was really, really good talking with you, and I appreciate you taking out the time to do this interview with me. Yeah, no worries. Um, this is Xander Jones signing out of the Great Metal Debate Podcast. Always remember, remember to keep it metal. Yeah,